Continuing our conversation here on News Talk with Dan Scandling, Dan Scandling of Ogilvy, Washington. He served for many years as Chief of Staff to former Northern Virginia Congressman Frank Wolf. Talking before the break, Dan, about the uh, race for the White House and the, the uh, the rivalry that's developed on the GOP side between the front runners Donald Trump and Ben Carson. A moment ago, you said that Donald Trump's recent comments uh, in Iowa about Ben Carson's religion were out of bounds. How is it that someone can continuously say things that the that the mainstream commentators uh, and folks uh, connected to politics in other ways view as out of bounds, surprising, most unusual, and yet? Donald Trump isn't just surviving. He's not just kicking along in the 7 or 9 percent range like so many fairly big names are. The guy continues to lead the pack. How does he defy the laws of political gravity like this? It's, it's amazing. He should have stock in Teflon. It's just amazing how much can slide right off his back. I think partly, too, because people don't see him as a politician. They see him as an entertainer. Also, that outsider factor. There are some people that think, hey, this is what we really need. We need this fresh, real talk, and we need how this works. Well, that's all well and good, but is that really what you want to be running the country? And if he were to hear these comments, he would just say, I'm some knucklehead former staffer. Who am I? And that's the way he dismisses everything. And I'm not sure that's, that's, a, that's really what we want in our president. There's, in real life, there's dating, and then there's the more serious thinking that you do when you think, is this, some, is, is this individual that, I've, that I'm hanging out with, someone that, for whom I could go the distance, who has the real values that I want? Are we in a prolonged sort of summer fling as we get into November, December, and then the new year, of course, will bring the caucuses and the primaries and actual votes? Uh, maybe even more substantive debates than we've had thus far, not to diminish the debates we've had thus far, is it possible that uh, the, the Trump fling uh, dissipates? And for that matter, that the Carson uh, fling uh, recedes and that we see some of these other people uh, get a second life? I think there are a number of campaigns that wishes that would, was going to happen. I'm not sure it is. You've got this phenomenon now where he, is, he has taken all the oxygen from the race and everything revolves around what he says and what he does. You also had a, a piece that ran over the weekend where it talked about a lot of the quote unquote insiders see him getting the nomination. I mean, this could be, this is becoming very, very real. It is. And um, talk about uh, the establishment's search for uh, someone to take on these outsiders. Uh, there are a number of senators and governors in the race, uh, or for folks who had those positions not that long ago. Will there be a coalescing behind someone that we, in a shorthand way, might refer to as a, a more establishment candidate than a, than a Carly Fiorina, who, of course, has not really seized the momentum for her, from her one good debate performance, but from a Fiorina, from a Carson, from a Trump, from these outsiders, will we see still a... Uh, coalescing behind an establishment you, you would think so, but everything is different right now. Just look what happened in the House, look what's happened on this race. Nobody would have, I, I think if you went and put a lie detector to Donald Trump, he would have never said he thought he'd be in here still now. I think he saw this kind of as a, he would say it and then move on and it would kind of be a one-time thing. But it, he has staying power, and Carson apparently has staying power too. I mean, I don't know what the establishment's going to do. I don't think anybody knows how this stuff plays out. But there is something you got to remember. To win the White House, you got to win Ohio and you got to win Florida. So is that really a ticket of Jeb Bush and John Kasich or John Kasich and Marco Rubio? Because those two key states, they're, they're important to win in the White House. When uh, Hillary Clinton uh, testified for 11 hours on Capitol Hill the other day, when she spent that entire day getting grilled, uh, David Jordan used the word badgered when she was when she was grilled by the House Select Committee looking into the uh, the death of foreign American diplomats in Benghazi. It brought to mind for some the refusal of Donald Trump and Ben Carson to debate if the thing was going to go three hours. They said it's two hours and we get to do opening and closing statements or we are out of there. Did that strike you as an interesting contrast? No, because it's different. I mean, that's a debate that you can negotiate in one way or another. A congressional hearing is something different. On all honesty, did it need to go 11 hours? No. Do the debates need to go two hours? They don't need to go two hours either. Even though you have all those candidates? No, they, they, they get so drawn out and so I don't think they need to be that long at all. They, they, can, they, they can do find ways to make them shorter. I don't think the average American's attention span stays that long. Are we seeing the race for the, uh, the two parties' presidential nominations move further down the road to being resolved 
prior to any votes being cast in the primaries and caucuses than we, we would see in a normal cycle? I don't think so. I think I still think there could be something that, that derails Mrs. Clinton's campaign if something happens with the emails, and not regarding Benghazi, but with the FBI investigation. That, I think that still is very much lurking in the background. From the president, from the Republican side, I think it's it, you're not going to know anything until late spring. I think there's still a lot to, to wash out. We talked earlier about Jeb Bush. He's got staying power financially. Kasich, Rubio, Christie. Mm, probably not as much. They may drop out earlier. Obviously, Donald Trump has staying power because of his own personal wealth. Carson, how long can he stay? I, that, that's an unknown. So uh, Bush could be in single digits. What I, this is what I hear you saying. Tell me if it is what you're saying. Bush could be in single digits into the new year. We could get through October, November, December into the actual voting. He could be then where he is now. But he would, and still be in the race. Still, sure. Still lurking, still financially alive, if not flush, still someone who could get the nomination. Sure, because he's got the financial wherewithal. Because he has, he's raised the money ahead of time, and now he's really cutting back on his spending to husband those resources. And the super PAC is already on TV in, in, in some of the key states. And that's important because that's what you've got to be able to. It, this, is a, this is a marathon. This isn't a sprint for somebody like Jeb Bush. Hillary Clinton's uh, t uh, performance at the debate, Joe Biden's decision to not seek the Democratic nomination, and her performance in front of the Benghazi committee, how much momentum does she derive from, from what's being broadly characterized as a really good stretch uh, for her, a really good week, week and a half, whatever it was? And will we look back at this recent period and say, you know, Hillary Clinton turned the corner when she uh, did well in the debate, Biden decided not to run, and uh, she did well before the committee. And she had some good, she had some good weeks. I mean, clearly the debate, she stood out, and then you come right on the heels of that, the Benghazi. And I think, I think, I think the debate was more of a deciding factor for the vice president than her, than anything else. I think he saw, wow, she has really got a command of the issues, and she knows where she is and what she can do. And there was no window there. The Benghazi. She, all she had to do was not get mad, not lose her temper, not show any great emotion and play it cool and calm, and, and she, which she did, and she did a very good job at that. Do party leaders and do the front runners, uh, or let's, let's not even limit it to front runners, do folks like uh, uh, Jeb Bush and Chris Christie care whether this period uh, uh, is productive for Congress right now? Is there a bleed over? Is there uh, a connection in the public's mind between uh, what does or doesn't happen in Washington and the party's efforts to brand itself and to uh, put a, a positive face toward the electorate going sure. into 2016. They, they don't want this this uproar on the Hill and, and fights between the conservatives and or the establishment. They also got to deal with these spending bills and do they want another government shutdown. They haven't passed an appropriations bill this year. Are they going to pass a, a long-term CR? They don't want to get into fights over abortion and other hot button issues that are going to be a problem for them as they go through the spring and into the fall. That, that's not where they want to be. They don't want to focus Congress stealing their thunder. They want to set the agenda, not Congress. In terms of the calendar, the debt ceiling is the first big fight. Correct. Next week. They've got, and, and Congress has got to do something because the, the trickle down effect, nobody knows what could happen and what would it mean to the world if the United States defaulted on this debt. That's huge. Now, that's going to be for Paul Ryan's first big hurdle. And then right on the heels of that, he's got to deal with a CR. So there, there's going to be some, some rough seas in the next couple of weeks for Paul Ryan. The impact on uh, the decision to uh, keep government funded, you know, to, to approve a CR or uh, run, uh, run into the sort of situation we've had with this, uh, the, the, when, when agencies uh, shut down and non-essential employees are set to go, uh, are, are forced to stay home. That has an outside, an outsized impact locally, but it is a big deal for the nation as a whole. Uh, tee up what you expect when uh, that decision draws close. I think you're going to move into a situation in December where they're going to do a long-term CR for the year. They're just going to pass one and get us through next year. They're not going to want to have to revisit that. And then they'll have to decide what they're going to do on the appropriations bills next spring. As far as federal employees, what a lot of people don't know is 85% of the federal workforce, it's outside of Washington, D.C. It's not inside the Beltway. And I've, I, as someone who worked for somebody who was a champion for federal employees, I'm going all for it. If you want to shut down the government, that's fine. But let's really shut down the government. Pull the planes out of the skies. Pull the, VA, pull the nurses and the doctors out of the VA centers. 
pull the prison guards. That's what the federal government does. And I think a lot of people think it's just some quote unquote bureaucrat over at a federal agency downtown. And that's not what it is. Close the parks. That you want to you want to really upset people, start closing all our national parks. That that's what the federal workforce does. Or these fights that are helping fight some of these uh, forest fires. So, so what I hear you saying is that we won't get the agency by agency uh, budgetary approval process that is in the textbooks and that we no, have there, had there, over time. No, there's no way. They don't have time to do it. There's but we'll no get the CR. We'll get the, sort of the, the, the uh, what's the word? What's the word? Uh, it'll be an omnibus. Omnibus, yeah. yeah. It'll be, they'll wrap them all together and push it in one big package. And they'll do it for a year. They'll get us through the election. Yes. Dan Scandling, always good to have you here. Thanks, for Thanks much, for very much for your time and your perspective. Dan Scandling of Ogilvy, Washington, former chief of staff to former Northern Virginia Congressman Frank Wolf. Good of you to visit. Thank you very much as always. A check of the hour's top stories and the work week forecast. It's all coming your way straight ahead. And then, how the Burgundy and Gold engineered that season-saving second half against Tampa Bay.